Leaseholds on properties, what are they and how does it affect you, especially if you're a short-term rental operator? So leaseholds is effectively where you do not own the land. So the difference between a freehold purchase and a leasehold purchase typically is when you buy a freehold, you own the land and the building that sits with on it. With a leasehold, you only own the property, i.e. the bricks and mortar that sits on the land. That does bring in some complications. There are so many different types of leases and this is where you must get legal support when you are buying a property or even looking to buy a property because getting into a deal with the wrong lease can really trip you up. So some of the main things to look out for, especially if you're looking at running these as service accommodation, short lets, all day furnished lets, etc., is to ensure that the leasehold actually permits the use of short term renting. Now, a lot of these leases might have been written in the 1930s, 1940s, when Airbnb wasn't even a thing. So they are open to interpretation, as my solicitors have told me, and whilst they will go down to the finer detail and advise you as best as they possibly can, sometimes these leases are so open to interpretation that really you don't know which way they would go in court, which I know isn't that helpful, but you've got to make some good decisions every now and then. But in the main, what I've seen is that they only allow the use of private residents. Now, this means that sometimes they will only allow an AST. Sometimes you will see that they can only have a family within the house. That means, again, sometimes you can rent as an AST, sometimes you can't. Now, if it says it's owner-occupier only, that means only you can live in it. And I have nearly fallen foul of this in an auction before where I was going to buy a property, look cheap, and then we had the lease looked at. And basically it was, you have to live in the property if you buy it. So therefore you cannot rent it out to either a tenant or on short-term renting. So these are just some of the things that you really need to look out for when you are buying leasehold properties. In the Northeast here, we have a thing called a Tyneside lease. Adds a lot of complication. And what I would recommend is if you are buying one of these houses, use a solicitor that is in the Northeast of England because they're familiar with them a lot more than solicitors down south. Basically what happens is a house, a terraced house was typically split into two flats quite some time ago. And the person upstairs owns the lease of the downstairs and vice versa. You pay a peppercorn rent to each other. So actually you pay nothing across the year and each one is responsible for the others. So for example, the upstairs flat is responsible for the groundwork. The downstairs flat is responsible for the roof. It can cause complications. It shouldn't prevent you from running short-term rentals, depending on any other clauses in the contract, of course. However, you just need to be mindful when you're going through the conveyance and process that this peppercorn style Tyneside lease does tend to cause confusion for solicitors outside of the area. If you don't own the leasehold, then you have the potential to buy it. I'm currently going through this process right now where a house that we have purchased is owned by the council. They own the leasehold on the house and we want to buy the freehold because A, the lease is quite short. There's only about 11 years left on it. And B, I would like to own the freehold. And then there are no complications. I can run a freehold how I see fit as long as the estate isn't under a grand lease. Another little quirky thing you gotta look out for. But in the main, if you own the freehold, you can pretty much do what you want with that property. Obviously, as long as you're respecting the neighborhoods, you're not gonna get any complaints from the council because ultimately the council can shut your operation down if they see fit. So you do have to still manage that even if you are on freehold. But you can buy the leasehold. What you then have to do is the leasehold -er will ask for a valuation on the lease and therefore they will send a value out. That value will give you a figure and then if you want to agree to buy that lease, then you can. We prefer to do that because it means we've got the full ownership of the property. As well as buying your leases, you can also extend the leases. So if we decided, obviously 11 years is too short to get a mortgage, so I'm going to need to do something with it if I can't buy it, if we can get it extended. Most leases are thankfully now getting extended to 999 years, whereas previously there were quite a lot only getting extended to 99 or 125. And as that clock ticks down, it makes the property less valuable because they become unmortgageable, typically under a 40 year left at the end of the mortgage term. So again, these are just things that you've got to look out for with leaseholds. 
There's an abundance of information out there, don't get me wrong. A lot of it can be quite confusing. And when you add on the service accommodation model, it confuses things again. And you've got to remember that solicitors in the main, conveyance and solicitors, are not specialists in short-term rentals. They deal with the day-to-day -day buy lets and the day-to-day -day housing remortgages and mortgages for you know the general public, you and I. But when it comes to short-term rentals, there's not a lot of solicitors that specialize in that. So you want to work with them, you want to get to understand them, and you want to try and get them to get more knowledge if you haven't found one that specialises in it. To this date, I haven't. I've just used my solicitor from day one, and we've got better and better together at it. I think they've improved their knowledge on it, and it's worked well, you know, and I think that's in the main what most solicitors will do. They'll have somebody within the organisation that'll dig into it a bit deeper as they're getting more and more inquiries through on that method. So just make sure you're protecting yourself first and foremost. And that is the number one rule in any property investing you don't want to buy a property that's got a short lease and you can't do anything with it you don't want to buy a property where you want to run it as a service accommodation unit and it's owner occupier only you know there's so many factors you've got to look out for so read the lease get an expert to read the lease you know it could be the best 200 pounds that you pay to ensure you stay on the right side of things and don't blow tens of thousands as always if you like the video please subscribe comment like etc head over to my tiktok channel as well we'll start making some quirky things over there and don't forget to check out the website ryankluke.com got loads of awesome goodies over there for you start downloading